Hey, we've got seven years to go, folks. You know, we got a we got a long time to go. He gave us a sneak peek at CPAC. The president is not only making America great again, he's going to keep it great with another run in 2020. And today we learned who's going to take the helm of his re-election bid. His 2016 digital director, Brad Parscale, was named as campaign manager. He first worked with the Trump organization, then helped bring the president's campaign to victory and went on to lead digital strategies for the RNC. Some exciting news for Trump supporters. Okay, so Dana, this is very early in announcing the re-election. What do you think the strategy behind that is? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I mean... <laughs> All right, Greg, what do you think? I, I do. I, I know. Have, but go ahead. I'm teasing. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I, we, I think everybody knows President Trump's going to run again. I mean, he's, it's not the first time that he... But CPAC wasn't the first time that he's hinted at it. In fact, he keeps talking about how the media, will, even though they can't stand him, they're going to end up voting for him so they can continue <laughs> to have good ratings. Right. Um, I do think that the it could have been something that just uh, structurally they wanted to say he wanted to send a message saying I already have my person so stop bugging me like stop calling me and telling me that you're going to be my campaign chairperson because okay. I already have somebody in mind and that way giving Brad that uh, title now quiets all of that and they're going to have their work cut out for them the the American public usually gives a president a second term. It's very rare that they don't. In our lifetime, there's really only Jimmy Carter, well, my lifetime, Jimmy Carter and um, <laughs> I was uh, born George in H. W. Bush. Um, and so you usually can get a second term. It, it is the path to the Electoral College is what's so important. Um, the popular vote is going to be difficult for the president to get. Right. He didn't get it last time, but he was able to get the Electoral College. The Democrats are super uh, invigorated, but they also are going to have a, probably 20 candidates, maybe mm. more, uh, mm. that are going to uh, basically water all that down. And what's different this time is that President Trump will have a record to run on. So it's not just, I might do this, yeah. I might do that. It's that I have done these things. And if you are a Republican, a conservative, you should be happy with these things. And that's going to be tough to defend. It's better to be on the attack constantly. So, oh, also, can I add one other thing? Sure. The other thing that this does is it allows President Trump to continue to define himself before other people define him for 2020, and he can spend his time defining those other people in the ways that he does. By you calling know, them I don't nicknames. Love it, but he does it, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Greg, you're just happy he made the announcement because you wanted some fresh news exactly. at the top of the show. Uh, just uh, before I get to my main point, uh, why he did this, the name Brad Parscale is an, actually an anagram for. Red Cabal's rap. <laughs> so he's definitely a Russian spy. Oh, okay. Mm. okay. He's a red running a cabal mm. to wrap up another election. Okay. All right. Glad you got to the bottom of that. Exactly. I get to a bottom of, get to the bottom of a lot of things, Kimberly. And here's why this matters. <laughs> he is thinking beyond the sale. People are thinking about all this collusion stuff, you know, they're thinking about this. He's saying, nope. We're, I'm, we're talking about the election. He's thinking beyond the sale. It's like, you know, when, you, when a real estate agent takes you to a house that's a little bit out of your range, and you walk into one room, and, you go, and then he goes, oh, couldn't you, this is, this is definitely your home office. So they're thinking beyond the sale. They want you to be in the house psychologically. This is a perfect bonus room for your pool table. Of course, bonus rooms are terrible because that means relatives stay, so never get a bonus room. You just get a bonus relative. It's, it's, always, it's essentially trying to look behind Whatever present conflict there is, if you're in a fight with your spouse, you start talking about the trip you're going to go on for your anniversary. <laughs> so you're thinking, assume, you're thinking always beyond the sale. Right. And that's what a salesman does to get, to get to move beyond. And the thing is, it works. Because now people are going to be talking about this. They're interested in this guy. Mm -hmm. They're interested in the strategy, the fact that he's going to be implementing a social network strategy again, which is very controversial but very winning and, and, and is really important. So he's changing the game. This is what salesmen do. And as Dana mentioned, Kimberly, he has a very large field in front of him. There's going to be a lot of names out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you think that is going to impact the reelection? It's probably a little easier when you're running against such a crowded field. Yeah, I think this was a very smart move. It doesn't surprise me that he did this. I'd heard that they were going to make some kind of, you know, announcement, get some word out there, because also the midterm elections are coming up. And this really shores up the base and saying, OK, let's get fired up. This is a president who, despite what people are trying to say, wants to run for reelection. He's 
not, you know, tired of it and being present or frustrated. He actually wants to keep doing things and having accomplishments, including winning another uh, term. So this way he can go out and have his surrogates as well, you know, campaign essentially, fundraise, go out and support the people they need to win re-election in the midterms and really kind of shore up the base. Also, it kind of takes some distraction away from all these other investigations because, like Greg says, he's saying, okay, we're going to get through this because bottom line is I'm running and I'm going to win again. And Juan Williams had a very provocative piece that was all over the Internet the other day. You think three prominent black female Democrats can take out President Trump in 2020? Well, I think they have the capacity, and that would be Oprah Winfrey, uh, Michelle Obama, and then, I mean, those two are really extraordinary because they're both on, in the Trump model as celebrities. Their, their political standing is a subset of their iconic status in American society. Camilla, Kamala Harris that simply has the big pockets of California behind her. But in all three cases, what's interesting to me is that you have women as kind of President Trump's, uh, you know, kryptonite. Mm -hmm. And so women, overwhelmingly, black women, Latino women, and I think it's 43 percent of white women voted against Trump. So you get a strong, iconic female figure. And boy, I think that's why Trump went after her. Well, on a you left out minutes. Maxine Waters. Why did you do that? I don't think she's I'm an sorry, icon. Think, Are no. you ageist? Is that but what it is? I, why not Maxine Waters? About well, if you're going to do a trend, if you're going to do a trend. Well, well I, look, if you're in love with Maxine, I'll, I'll talk to her <laughs> for you. But here's the thing. I no, think that President Trump is more interested in running a permanent campaign, mm -hmm. and that's what he's doing. I think President that, Obama was accused no, of doing no. the exact Let same thing. Let me just thing. say, there's no, there's no comparison. I mean, Only President Bush Obama nice. <laughs> didn't announce that he was running until it was like two years before the, the next campaign. This guy announced on the inauguration day. By the way, I know for everybody who read the Drudge Report or is watching the show, they say, oh, President Trump just announced that he's running. On inauguration day, he filed papers <laughs> yeah. announcing yeah. That he was going to I run think it was clear again. Too. Obama was so, running for no, re-election no, as well. Please. There's no comparison in okay. terms of the time period. But the second sure. thing to say is that when you look at Trump, he has raised 43 million dollars in the last two years. That's four times more than Obama raised in his first two years. So you understand this is a permanent campaign. He's not. He gets a kick out of running. He loves the rallies. Remember, after the November 16 election. He was holding mm -hmm. rallies. Yeah. He had his first campaign rally for, for 2020 a month after he was inaugurated. So you're telling me that President Obama wasn't in love with campaigning. He was an amazing campaigner and a terrible leader. I, I don't think he was a terrible leader, and obviously he got well, One of the big knocks so. on President Obama was that he couldn't manage the government very well. Oh, and when he wasn't on the ballot... His party suffered. He was a great orator, and he loved giving these speeches. I, so think, I don't, I don't think, think there's, there's any question the same about type President of comparison Trump. except but for I the think timing if, of the announcement. If I was to draw a bottom line on what he did today, I would say, one, he loves campaigning. He loves the rallies. That's when he's at his happy. He's not a governing guy. But the second thing to say is Hope Hicks was before the House Intelligence Committee. Are we talking about what's going on with Hope Hicks talking to investigate? No, we're talking about... The distraction. Well, speaking of investigations, Dana, oh, I, right. think, I think uh, Jeff Scheduled Sessions <laughs> said that uh, he was going to open up an investigation into FISA abuses mm -hmm. under the Obama administration. Um, I think it's just basically investigation warfare going on at this point. Is this going to do anything? Well, I, the investigation that a Sessions ordered will fall under the Inspector General, Michael mm -hmm. Horowitz, who has his hands full, has got a lot of stuff to do. One of the, uh, Trey Gowdy was on the Daily Briefing today and said that he welcomes this investigation, but there could be other needs for investigations, at, such as the State Department, uh, if, in case this investigation that they're working on now turns up other funny business. How was Trey Gowdy's hair when he good. made up? Good. He's good? Looking good, yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Greg, what do you think about uh, Investigation Gate? I am, uh, I believe there's an investi ga Investigation Gate gate, <laughs> and that bothers me. No, I was just thinking about announcing that I'm going to be running for re-election before I actually run for my first election. Why? I don't know. Just for the heck of it, I already I, I, I want my library to be in San Mateo, California, across <laughs> the street from Sarah High School. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, That's you all. have to t knock down anything to make. Yes, you got to knock down a lot of stuff <laughs> from my be, library. What would be your platform? Free ribs. There'll be free ribs. <laughs> There'll be free ribs and no books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Kimberly. Um, Sessions looking into the FISA abuses. Mm -hmm. um, this whole thing's boomeranged on the Democrats, if you ask me. We have an unmasking memo that's about to drop, and that's not going to be pretty for a lot of the Obama officials allegedly involved, like Samantha Power and Susan Rice. Do you think he can make any headway, or is this going to just get lost in all the text memo investigation kerfuffle? No, I think people are going to pay attention to it because there's been quite a lead up, uh, you know, to this point, and there's been a lot of um, vocal pressure, in, you know, in the media and from people and from uh, Trump supporters to examine this, especially given the fact that Democrats started this. They uh, opened up this can of worms and made these accusations, and now this is follow through. And follow through eventually leads to justice. So we'll see here what happens. He's doing his job. He should be doing this. He'd be derelict in his duty if he did not follow through on it. And then what we need to do is cover it. All right, Juan. Last word. Well, I just love what Kimberly said. Investigations lead to justice. Okay. Maybe we can investigate <laughs> Sheriff Israel. I think uh, that might be a good idea. All right.